Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for better chances in an apocalypse next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil to celebrate the remake of Resident Evil 3 and not because of the coincidentally timed global pandemic. I don't want to make any jokes about it because there are people in my audience who will be getting sick or have people close to them being sick. So wash your hands, stay inside, and figure out how to play D&D over Discord. Here's a character you can play. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, zombies. Not a fan. Let's make sure that we're really good at taking them down. Next, we'll make sure that we don't get bitten while we're reloading with sharp reflexes and fast hands to make rapid fire a possibility. Finally, we need a command over reactions with the ability to respond quickly to any throw that needs saving. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. Just make sure your dexterity and intelligence are high. Dexterity will be number one. You're light on your feet and a hell of a shot. Intelligence next, you've got puzzles to solve, and I'm pretty sure they don't let dummies on the Secret Service. Constitution after that, zombies like to bite, and you like to not turn into a zombie. Not dying and not undying are both constitution based. Follow that up with wisdom, you've got sharp eyes and a great sense of direction. Strength is a little low, you're in great shape, but prefer to jump away from boulders rather than catching them with your bare hands, and we'll dump charisma. We really don't need it, and you're a bit of a goober? Leon is a human, but if you want to hunt the undead, radiant damage could be helpful, and Asmars get a lot of that. Variant humans can pick a feat though, and the resilient feat gives you plus one to an ability score of your choice and proficiency with saving throws for that score. I'm going to go for dexterity to make sure you can jump out of the way of explosions, or like I mentioned earlier, falling boulders. Bump your dexterity and constitution with your two free points, take survival for your skill of choice, and build your own background for investigation and medicine proficiency. Call it the first responder background, or whatever you want, it's your background. Let's start off with what we're not going to be, which is a ranger. The player's handbook ranger can pick a favorite enemy, but that that doesn't really help you beyond tracking them. And Leon doesn't track zombies, he shoots them or runs away from them. The original revised ranger, if that's a phrase that makes sense, would be nice, but that's pretty much guaranteed to be retired with the class feature variance ranger seeming to be a nice balance between the original and revised version in terms of power. That ranger doesn't have a specific type of monster it likes to kill, which is really the only thing I would want from ranger. Leon doesn't really cast spells, any spells he does cast are mostly just low level healing or booms, the form of which we can get from a different source and the latter of which we can only get from that source well not only i guess we could make him a sorcerer but using sorcerer to get high-tech weaponry seems like a dumb idea right i did that with doom slayer that's the joke kick things off as a fighter first level fighters can choose two skills from the fighter list acrobatics and athletics will make you the physical specimen you are you can choose a fighting style archery will make you much more accurate than i am in the footage here giving you a plus one to your attack rolls with a ranged weapon you also get second wind which lets you recover hp equal to 1d 10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest so you can get back to protecting ashley lord knows she ain't protecting herself second level fighters get action surge letting you double your efficiency one round per short rest letting you take two actions instead of one, letting you get Raccoon City safe as quickly as possible. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and monster hunters are the best at taking down monsters, who would have guessed? But hey, Tulak, didn't you avoid using Ranger because the revised Ranger Unearthed Arcana is basically dead and the monster hunter fighter is also basically dead? Fair point. Counterpoint. I don't have one, we're doing it anyway. You can grab a bonus proficiency from a short list. Perception will fill in your special eyes. You get four superiority die, which are D8s you can use for some cool stuff. This is basically a variation of the Battlemaster subclass. So if your DM doesn't like using Unearth Arcana, that would be a decent substitute. Also, I'm giving this my personal endorsement as not busted, Tulak approved. I know that means a lot. You can use those superiority die for a precision attack, letting you add them to the attack roll of an attack. Sharpened attack lets you add it to the damage roll of an attack and gives a creature focusing on spells disadvantage on their concentration check to maintain it. Sharpened senses lets you add the superiority die to a perception or insight check, and superior willpower lets you add it to an intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throw. Pair that with your proficiency in saving throws for your physical stats and you should be safe from just about anything there's also hunter's mysticism letting you cast protection from evil and good once per long rest meaning aberrations celestials elementals fiends fey and undead have disadvantage on attack rolls against a creature you choose for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration and they can't charm possess or frighten your buddy it'd be nice to use this on yourself but let's be real ashley needs it more than you or you could just drop her in a dumpster while you work maybe this spell is the dumpster who knows 
Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. The alert feat gives you plus five to your initiative rolls. You can't be surprised while you're awake and other creatures don't get advantage on you just because you can't see them. That last bit doesn't really work for a horror video game, but the extra initiative will help you be ready to go even during a cutscene. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as an action, unless you're using a crossbow, which is generally how I reflavor guns for D&D. As they have a reloading penalty, that means you can't attack twice in the same round unless you take a feat or fix it some other way later. Technically, it would be fastest to fix it with the crossbow expert feat at the sixth level of fighter, but a fast fix isn't always the best. We're going to instead dump into Artificer, letting you grab some Artificer spells, including cantrips. Light creates a light so you can see in the dark with your dumb human eyes. Firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 2d10 fire damage for a little grenade, but like a grenade you don't run out of, boy, that would be nice in the games. For your first level spells, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier as an action to a creature you touch for a little first aid. You also get Magical Tinkering, letting you do some fun stuff to a tiny magical object, make it glow, put a message on it, make it stink, or just a bunch of other little things. Honestly, not what we're here for. Second level artificers get infusions, which is what we are here for, letting you make your items a little more magical. You know four of these, but can only have two going per long rest. Repeating weapon solves the crossbow issue, letting you ignore the loading property, adding one to attack and damage rolls, and making a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances. So no matter what the Umbrella Corporation throws at you, you're ready for it. Enhanced weapon makes any weapon magical, gives it a plus one to attack and damage rolls, so your knife can also cut through zombie flesh. Goggles of night could be useful to give you 60 feet of dark vision, and enhanced armor will make your leather vest bulletproof, adding one to its AC. I'd say enhanced armor and repeating shot are the best options for you. Third level artificers can choose a specialty, and it isn't the 20th yet, but let's get herbal. Alchemists can brew experimental elixirs, which lets you combine plants into something a little more potent. Roll a d6 to determine what kind of elixir you make. They get progressively less accurate to the character as we move down the table. A 1 makes a healing elixir that restores 2d4 plus your intelligence modifier and HP. A 2 makes a swiftness elixir that increases movement speed by 10 feet for an hour. A 3 makes a resilience elixir that adds 1 to the AC of a creature for 10 minutes. 4 makes a boldness elixir that gives a creature a d4 to add to attack rolls and saving throws for a minute. A 5 makes an elixir of flight that gives a creature a flying speed of 10 feet for 10 minutes. And a 6 puts the alter self spell on a creature for 10 minutes. Like I said, those first few sort of work. Then get a little off as you move further down the list. And that's enough of that. Back to shooting. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Bump your dexterity here for more accurate shots. I'll want another feat eventually, but it doesn't work as well without perfect aim. Seventh level monster hunters are monster slayers, meaning that when you add your superiority die to the damage of a shot, you can use two superiority die instead of one. And if you're targeting an aberration, fey, fiend, or undead, you can deal maximum damage to it automatically instead of rolling. That's 16 at this point. With that kind of damage, they better have a second head underneath their first one because you're blowing it up. Wait, they do? Yikes. You also get another superiority die at this level and might need one if the zombies are growing extra heads. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement. We'll use this to cap off our dexterity and start working on intelligence to make sure that we're healing the maximum amount with our little green friends. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Pairing this with proficiency in the physical stats and the superiority die you could add to the soft stats, you'll be tough enough for even the toughest of missions, which is pretty much all you go on nowadays. 10th level monster hunters get improved combat superiority die, buffing those die up to d10s and buffing that extra monster damage up to 20. So they better have a head under their head that's under their head. Okay, wait, now this is just getting excessive. Speaking of excessive, 11th level fighters get another extra attack so you can attack three times in one round and burn through all of your superiority die in one round if there's something you want to do that to. We've all wasted our magnum ammo right before a boss fight. There's no shame in it. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement, but I'd rather have a feat. The sharpshooter feat lets you ignore all but full cover when you make a ranged attack. Attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage and you can take a negative five penalty to your attack roll to add 10 to the damage roll. Ammo is scarce in your game, even if I've never met a DM or a player who liked to track it in a tabletop game, but this will help you get a lot done with a limited supply. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable, always worth noting, these can be used on death saving throws because dying is bad, you shouldn't do it. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, I might start rounding off lower stats, but investing in your constitution is never a bad idea, especially when all you do is shoot things and heal occasionally. 
15th level monster hunters are relentless, meaning that when you have no superiority die when you roll initiative, you get to get one to make sure some monsters die. You also get a 6th superiority die to use, which means thanks to Sharpshooter and Action Surge, you can deal 6d10 plus 156 damage in one round to an undead. That means you can single-handedly bring down a lich in one round. Now's when I'm starting to realize that this Unearthed Arcana might not be as non-busted as I thought. 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat, and what the heck, let's grab the tough feat. 2 HP for every level you have and every level you'll get, so like, next level. Our capstone is the 17th level of fighter for another use of action surge and indomitable. Now keep in mind, if you spend all your superiority dying your first action surge, you don't get them for the second one, you're gonna have to deal with only dealing 6d10 plus 90 damage. That's basically a super soaker. Just kidding, that's great. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First off, I think I've mentioned this, you can kill some zombies. Like, even if they were druids named Pamela Isley, which if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know, in my opinion, is the strongest build I've made. Does that mean Leon is the strongest build I've made? No, it just means that he counters her specifically since she's a living dead girl. You're also incredibly bulky with over 200 HP, 18 AC thanks to some enhanced armor and proficiency with all physical saving throws. Finally, you're great at supporting your team with some healing spells to keep everyone happy and well herbed. For weaknesses, your charisma isn't great, so banishment could be an issue, as could talking to people with your mouth. Your spellcasting modifier is also not great, even though healing isn't really your main focus. Finally, your superiority die are a limited resource. You could run out pretty quickly. But that's after you've dealt over 100 damage with your modifier. Get your shotgun out and show everyone what Raccoon City's finest can do. Just watch out for something that can soak up your initial barrage. After you've used all your good ammo, survival could be pretty horrific. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. And if you like keeping Raccoon City safe, it's probably because you're a sly person who likes raccoons. So I think I'll have something you're going to enjoy on Tuesday.